Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's uh, lecture on network planning. Um, so this will follow along with the slide deck for this course. Um, so when we look at network planning, why do we do network planning? Um, and, and, you know, looking at these slides, you know, it's finding the right balance between inventory, transportation, and manufacturing cost. Um, and, and what that's going to mean is, um, you know, when you plan your network, as a supply chain professional, it's not just about the purchase price of the part, or it's not just about the lead time. We really have to comprehensively look at um, the entire business and how our actions interact with it. Um, we want to make sure that we're considering how supply and demand um, play with the business when we're looking at uncertainty. Um, we want to be able to run different scenarios um, to position ourselves for the most effective use of our capital. So one thing as a um, supply chain professional you want to be aware of is that um, it, you know, it is our job to be stewards of the company's finances. And while you may think, let's just put inventory on the shelf, it protects us, it's a good thing to have inventory, it, it's not always a good thing because it does cost you money and that use of capital for inventory could really impact what else you could do with that money. And we want to understand how we're using our resources through sourcing. Um, that just goes back into to, to proactively using the, the resources of the business in the right way. How are we supporting the manufacturing? How are we supporting the organization as good as we can? So moving on to slide three of the presentation, network design. So when you look at a supply network, um, the biggest thing is, is, you know, how many facilities do we want to have? Where do we want to have them? And what are the size? Um, so for a retailer such as Walmart uh, or Target, the stores are going to be one um, piece of this. So how many stores do you have? Where are the stores? How big are the stores? Um, obviously, a small town is going to have a smaller Walmart than a big city. Um, we also want to look at uh, the distribution centers. So, for example, Walmart has regional distribution centers that could be in every little town or, or maybe like seven or eight in a state. And then they have large distribution centers uh, and they are spread out a little more and then they support the smaller distribution centers. When you look at a manufacturing network or the supply network for a manufacturing location, you have distribution centers, you have manufacturing plants. This is where you could have a 3PL come in. So when I worked in the automotive industry, we would actually have a, um, a 3PL and our suppliers would ship inventory in to the 3PL and then they would ship it to us one day at a time. Um, so you know, those are some things to consider with your network design. Um, inventory positioning. So you want to identify your stocking points. Um, you want to identify, um, you know, what is going to be your, your, your inventory level you're going to hold. Um, so that's kind of your max inventory. What is going to be your minimum inventory? Um, that's also called a reorder point. So um, we may say on a widget, we will hold, um, we want to, you know, the maximum inventory we're going to hold is 100. Um, and then we'll say that when it hits a uh, minimum inventory or a reorder point of uh, 50, then we issue our order quantity. So the order quantity is going to be a calculation and every individual organization does this different, but it's going to be the amount needed. So plus the amount that will used in the lead time. So to make math simple, let's say we have a hundred inventory level. Um, our reorder point is 50. Um, we use, um, two of these a day, and it takes a week to get product. So when we hit 50, then we need 50 to get us back to our inventory level of 100. So then we also assume two per day and a week to get them in. That's 10, so our reorder quantity would be 60. Um, so once you kind of understand those points, then you go further of, you know, what are we going to stock? Where are we going to stock it? Uh, a great example is, is you know, Retailers are going to stock um, probably more flip-flops and swim trunks in the southeast. 
and they're probably going to stock more winter coats and hats and gloves in the northern states. Um, we also look at resource allocation. So, you know, we're determining the scale and scope of each facility um, and then a sourcing strategy for each facility. Um, so that's, um, you know, th this, this could be calculated among another thing. So, I mean, for example, let's say that you dual source a product. Um, you could, you know, in theory, we have a supplier in California, a supplier in North Carolina, and we say, hey, you know, every every one of our DCs that is east of the Mississippi is going to buy their produce from this North Carolina company, and everybody that's west of the Mississippi is going to buy it from California company. Um, obviously, that mixture changes if the shelf life of the of, of what you're carrying inventory is shortened. Um, so when we look at network design, um, you know, continuing to look at that. Um, one thing that's key to look at is infrastructure. And, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but number of facilities, um, you may need one, you may need a hundred. Um, and, and that can always be a living number. Um, you know, everyone jokes about something goes out of business and two days later, it's a spirit Halloween store. Um, that's a great thing. I mean, spirit does have some permanent stores, but they do have these temporary, they have, a, it's a living number. Um, so, don't be afraid to make your infrastructure be flexible. Um, it may cost you a little bit more, but it could save you a lot. Um, also, when looking at this, you need to consider, you know, who are the customers I'm serve, serving? Um, are these close to my sources? And are they also close to my customers? Um, and then how are we going to staff? Um, there's a reason that you see um, Walmart and, and Amazon are starting to put more and more distribution centers um, just, you know, half an hour outside of major cities because wages are lower. Um, you're typically going to have less college educated residents. Therefore, it's a good pool of workers for that warehouse. Um, also, one thing we want to consider is the facility. So, as I talked a little bit about how close is it to your supplier base, but also how close is it to your customers? Um, you know, typically in the past, you wanted to be closer to your customer or your point of sale if you had perishable goods. Now with Amazon doing things one day shipping, everyone else, Target, Walmart, Meyer, um, uh, I'm trying to think of other major retailers, Dick's Sporting Goods, they all are getting more and more distribution centers so that they can cut down their days of shipment. Also looking at the availability of land. Can we buy land cheaper 30 minutes outside of Indianapolis or 30 minutes outside of St. Louis? Um, can we put this warehouse in, um, you know, in East Alton, Illinois, rather than in uh, a nicer part of St. Louis? Um, that would lead to lower costs of staffing. Um, so um, moving on, this now I'm on slide six. This is looking at... Um, you know, your fixed cost. So this is, um, you know, I would just encourage you to go back um, and read this section in the book. And, and when we talk about fixed cost, this is going to be really critical in your warehouse. You want to buy with, you, you want to find a warehouse with as little fixed cost per usable square foot, foot as possible, because the less overhead you can add through the logistics process, the better. Um, this is where when you look at 3PLs, you look at 4PLs, and you can have shared distribution centers. Um, so the company I work for, we utilize um, some where um, we have some distribution centers, maybe in some smaller countries where we have like a quarter of a warehouse, but then four other companies are in that warehouse. Um, it helps really cut down on some of the overhead. Um you know, so so looking at estimating your space needs, um, there's a book method and an alternative method. Uh, the book method is, is pretty straightforward. You know, you consider um, what your uh, annual flow is, and then you look at your inventory turnover ratio, um, and then that helps you figure out, hey, this is my average inventory level. Um, you can assume that each unit takes up so much square foot of fit space, um, and then you required space for products and then the total space required for the warehouse is x i mean so this walks through you really good on the slide um and, and you know if you have questions further when we get to the homework feel free to reach out to me um, alternatively you can estimate an annual cube movement so you can 
take into account kind of the seasonal ebbs and flows, and, and then you can figure it out that way. So, um, also when you consider with uh, network designs, you want to understand that more facilities could lead to a profit and loss of P&L impact. Higher inbound transportation costs, lower outbound transportation costs. Um, you're going to have higher fixed costs with the more buildings you have. You're going to have higher operating costs. This is where if you look at, you know, you maybe have... Um, 60% of your facilities are fixed, they're permanent, and 40% are maybe seasonal. Um, an example is, you know, maybe you um, temporarily rent some face, you know, uh, from September through November as you're building up your inventory for Christmas, and then you very quickly uh, end those leases December 20th. Um, also, you know, we want to look at... Um, inventory positioning considerations. So can we hold the volume we need? And is that volume in the right geographic areas? Um, it does not do a um, manufacture of uh, to have mass warehouses in the Northeast. Um, it doesn't do any good for a seafood company to have warehouses in South Dakota. Um, you wanna understand, you know, can your warehouses handle the complexity of, of, of a high product mix. How many different SKUs can they handle? Um, are they able to do this to make your, your warehouse more versatile? Or do you want to have specialized warehouses? Um, you know, and, and as I've talked a, bit, a little bit about with uh, seasonality, understanding your demand patterns. So do you have that flexible space for seasonal, um, seasonal uh, warehousing needs uh, or promotions? Um, and then also looking at your manufacturing approach. So if you're, you're doing uh, inventory positioning, network design for a, for a manufacturer, um, are you making to stock? Are you making to order? So are you, you need more space for uh, finished inventory if you're making to stock. However, if you're making to order, you may need more space for raw material. And they're two completely different types of storage. Um, and the inventory carrying cost is much less for the make to order. Um, because you're holding material that all you've done is unload it. Um, you don't have uh, your, 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 your manpower, your, your uh, labor overhead applied to it yet. Um, we also want to consider the types of inventory, you know, going back to that manufacturing approach. Is it, is it raw goods? Is it work in progress? Is it finished goods? It could be a mix of all three. It could be a mix of two. Um, and then we want to look at our distribution approach. Are we going direct delivery to the customer? Are we a B2B? Um, as you look at this, that will add a lot of complexity if you're going B2C. If you're going direct to the customer, customer there is a lot more uh, intricacies involved in that. So you need to have a warehouse design for that. Um, I think that as we see more and more companies going to a B2C model, we're seeing some struggles in how they're handling um, the inventory and logistics side of it, but also the re reverse logistics of taking returns. So, um, you know, when you look at how you're going to, to calculate your square foot, um, future inventory is going to equal current inventory times um, future locations divided by current locations. So, um, for example, if you have 400,000 units um, and you have three branches currently and one branch locally, um, you would take that one branch as your future location. You would divide it by your three branches, and that would give you a 0.33. Um, and then your current inventory is 400,000, um, and that would give you 230,940 units. Um, However, if you flip to three future locations versus one current location, it actually then changes your um, your future inventory to 692,000. So supply chain master planning, um, this is gonna get into play when we look at resource allocation. So are we coordinating and allocating production and distribution strategies? 
Um, you know, when you really look at the supply chain master planning, um, this isn't talking about what we're going to order next week, next month. This is really what we're going to order in the next six to 12 months. Um, it's doing that medium to long-term planning that is tied directly to your manufacturing. Um, you also have to be very much in tune with marketing sales. This is where you may pull from, from a sales force. You may look at different, uh, forecasting methods such as the, uh, uh, survey of executives or the Delphi model or the sales, Salesforce model. Um, you want to line with finance because because there are going to be ebbs and flows in cash flow and making sure that you're not uh, hindering or putting a burden on the organization with your ordering plans. Um, variables may include your facilities. How, how many do you have? How much can you store? Uh, you may be able to get a great deal on a product that has a long shelf life. But if you don't have a place to store it, you can't buy it. Um, so ultimately, all this has to tie back into the firm's overall strategy. So as a supply chain and procurement professional, we cannot just go off and do what we want to do. We do have to align with the business. Um, you know, we also want to understand the function of the product's economic density. So... Um, you know, for example, um, it costs a lot more in inventory to um, to store a container load of Rolexes than it does a container load of Timexes. I mean, it's the same watch. It's the same thing. It's a big shipping container of watches, but the cost density is higher for a luxury watch versus a, a Timex or a Swatch. Um, and then the function and operation scope. So, Will we manufacture this? Will we store it? Um, what types of storage do we need? Do we need a specialized facility? So if you're working in pharmaceuticals or food, do you need a cold room? Um, you know, if you need a cold room, how sensitive is the temperature? Does it have to be between, say, 40 and 50? Or does it have to be between uh, 29 and, and 31? Um, so just some things to consider. Can you have a multi-purpose facility? Um, or do you have to have specialized facilities? Um, so economic density is going to be very important when you start to looking at building your supply network. Um, and then, you know, just uh, the summary, you know, your three components of network planning are going to be your network design, your inventory positioning, and your resource allocation. Um, we're also going to look at supply chain master planning. So finding that optimal mix of locations, what we store in those locations, the capabilities and capacities of the location. Do we have specialized um, storage at any of the locations? Um, and then considering the proximity. Is the proximity to your supply base, to your raw materials? Um, so obviously, let's say you are Alcoa. Um, Alcoa has a massive facility in Jamaica, and that's because Jamaica is where they get some of their raw materials. So they bring it in, um, they process it into a more easily shipped product, and then they ship it from Jamaica to locations all around the U.S. Um, and the world where they actually make it into aluminum. Um, how are your capabilities? Do they line up? Um, do they make sense in the regions you have them for your network? And then your economic density. How valuable are the goods at different points in your supply chain? So hopefully this gave you guys a, a little more in-depth understanding of network design rather than just reading the slides. Um, any questions you have, please do not hesitate to reach out.